let's talk about Hackintosh today. Hackintosh is one of those things that I'm really passionate about. I love, I would love to cover it more on the channel, but I'm just afraid of getting channel strikes. Uh, I have made past Hackintosh articles and videos. Uh, you can get one or two of them. I'll link it up here in the title card, but uh, I do have like a full on, hey, if you have an AMD, non-standard hardware, how to get it working in a Hackintosh. But uh, that's not this video. This video is going over some of the developments going on in Hackintosh and also how to build kind of your own using some of these new projects that are hitting the scene, which is kind of amazing. And then also I'll briefly mention Apple is going to ARM architecture for all their computers. And uh, this is kind of an exciting thing, but at the same time, are they gonna build something in that CPU to where you can't do any Hackintoshes? I don't know. I, I think honestly, when it comes to hacking, where there's a will, there's a way. And I think people still find a way to, to make a Hackintosh, even with the ARM architecture and all that, as they still have to support the Intel ones. So I know at least for the next couple of years, Hackintosh will still be a thing. And I would go ahead and venture that someone will figure out a way to uh, keep using it far past that. So with all that, let's jump on the desktop, go over a couple articles, and then kind of show you this open source project called OpenCore. And uh, it's really interesting, something that I'm going to be doing a custom build on just to have my own Hackintosh. Uh, but I do want to cover some of the requirements or the prerequisites because it's really important. You don't just think any machine out there can do Hackintosh. While you technically you can, it's just huge headache and updates will probably break your system. So with all that, let's get on the desktop and jump into it. All right, so first, right out of the gate, what you're seeing all over YouTube, you're seeing all over the net, internet, if you research OpenCore, there's a spinoff company called OpenCore Computers, and they're trying to sell full-blown PCs or Hackintoshes that are uh, pre-built with dual boot with Windows. Uh, they only accept cryptocurrency because they know Apple will sue them out of existence, much like they did Psystar in the early 2010s. Uh, Psystar stopped existing and got went defunct in 2012. So, you know, Psystar, it's just kind of a little history of Hackintosh and Hackintosh clones. It's not that you can't make a Mac computer. It's that it's hard to make a Mac computer and not get sued over it. Heck, I'm afraid to make Hackintosh videos just because of copyright strikes from Apple. They, they hire a third party company to go out and find people on YouTube doing Hackintosh and strike them. So that's how egregious Apple is with their strike system. Uh, they scare the crap out of me. That's why I don't cover them too much. If I, I do any Hackintosh videos, I'll probably put it on an LBRY because uh, they'll have a hell of a time trying to get me over there, where on YouTube, very easy. I'd be easy pickings. So with that, uh, that's kind of what's going on with the pre-built Hackintoshes. Don't do this uh, because honestly, the open door computers, it sounds like a scam. They only want cryptocurrency. And that's just kind of, eh. and if you do end up doing this, they do use an intermediary called Bitrated. I've used this in the past, uh, doing some hardware swaps on Reddit. It is a reputable service. So this may not be a scam, but at the very least, uh, I want to build my own, you know, I'm, 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 I'm a tinkerer. I love to tinker and do things. And the project open core is really what I want to talk about. But before we talk about that, I kind of wanted to just show you this, um, Mac minis, the, the bottom of the barrel when it comes to the entry level um, Apple. You got an i3, 8 gig memory, 2256 solid state for, for uh, $800. And then below it, you got an i5 that's $1,100. These prices are just highway robbery. I have no issue taking what Apple's doing and making a Hackintosh. People that think you're getting good hardware from these prices, I mean, you would think you would get good hardware, but really, this is just mediocre at best. And if you need any proof of that, go over to Lewis Rosman's channel. He actually does a whole bunch of repairs full-time. That's his whole business, is repairing uh, computers and Apple products. And uh, yeah, it, it's, it's not high quality, and you just get gouged. So that's where Hackintoshes come into play, and this is where the OpenCore project 
really shines. So open core is fully on GitHub, fully open source. And uh, a lot of people are used to uh, Clover and before Clover was Chameleon. There's other projects to basically load all the things that you need for non-sanctioned Apple hardware to load Mac OS. But open core takes a new approach and it's a little cleaner approach. Right now it's still in alpha stages. They haven't gotten to version one yet. I think they're on 0.5.9 as of this video. But I've been really tinkering this whole past week about open core, uh, loading different systems up with it. And it's really good. And I got to say, it's a, an improvement. It's still rough around the edges. Clover's still the tried and true in the Hackintosh realm. But uh, I think I'm going to build a full on open core system myself here at the house. I'll try and document it and then just kind of give an update here in a couple weeks. Uh, if I can get decent prices, I'm going to, I like to bargain bin shop at like Micro Center and stuff just to see what I can get my hands on. But you can't just go out and use any old electronic when you're doing a Hackintosh. Let's get into that a little bit too, because uh, this is just open core in this bootloader and how it's developed, but they have a really, really good follow along, get started guide that is very intuitive. And the thing I love about it most, you don't need a Mac to get started. Uh, every other Hackintosh guide out there is like, hey, grab your Mac. And I'm like, I didn't want to waste $2,000 on a Mac. <laughs> so uh, let's go over the actual how to guide uh, real fast. Dortenia uh, of github.io is what this is. It's an actual vanilla laptop guide. And uh, you can actually go through this entire guide. It helps build everything for you. It helps you understand the structure of OpenCore. And I've used it. I've gotten to the screen and got a fully working uh, Hackintosh from this. I like this way a little bit better because it kind of takes you from the very start to the very end of it, which is great. However, I will say this much about it. You have to really love to tinker, and this is not going to be like an hour to get done. Uh, you're going to definitely do a lot of trial and error. You're going to have a lot of failed, and a lot of uh, uh, problems, but it's really neat during the installation process. Once you go through all of these things, it has troubleshooting where you can see all the different error messages and kernel panics and things you can run into. You click that, it tells you, hey, you might need this uh text and all these other things. Now, depending on what you have for hardware, uh, it does show you kind of what not to use, which I think is great. So uh, let's go up to that real fast. And if you get to the very start of this, the desktop guide, it'll tell you anti-hardware buyer's guide. So as far as hardware goes on the Hackintosh, uh, I like this little anti-Hackintosh buyer's guide. This is really what you should never do. Uh, CPUs to avoid Ryzen chips, basically, all AMD chips. You really want Intel chips on this, uh, and generally the processors with K after them work the best. Uh, and then as far as GPUs, NVIDIA is kind of like what you don't want. Anything with the Turing and above, you typically don't want. But honestly, pretty much any NVIDIA card you don't want to use with the Mac these days. After, I think, Sierra uh, or High Sierra, I think they stopped supporting NVIDIA altogether. So you can't even update to a Mojave or, or Catalina. So uh, don't use those. Motherboards and storage. Honestly, when it comes to storage and most of this stuff, you don't have to worry too much except for uh, possibly networking and wireless or some gotchas. Uh, but for motherboards, there's one specific type of motherboard that is like the cream of the crop, what at most uh, the holy grail for Hackintoshes, and that's the Z370 chipset. The Intel 3, uh, Z370 chipsets are just awesome. <laughs> Very little tweaks need to be done. And the more good hardware you can get for a Hackintosh, typically the better off you will be. Uh, there's a couple Wi-Fi's and, and if you're looking for a laptop, uh, I'm gonna probably tweak out my laptop in there, but it's using uh, the Wi-Fi card is not that great and you can't use anything with like Intel wireless on it. So that's a lot of laptops you can pop open the back replace that card with something better, and then you can have a decent wireless setup. I may get that going later, uh, but for right now, I just kind of want to show this anti-hardware guide, and if you already fall into this and you already have this, it might be something fun. Grab another hard drive, slap that in your computer, and try and load up Mac OS on it uh, using OpenCore. Uh, be prepared for a day or two of just beating your head up against a wall, 
but uh, it's just kind of a fun project, something that I'm real passionate about. I wanted to showcase in this and uh, kind of really to bring us to our last story, go over ARM processors and the future of Hackintosh. So this is kind of where we're sitting in the Hackintosh realm. There's a lot of really awesome things happening right now, but uh, the future is definitely in jeopardy with ARM processors being built by a a Apple. I, I don't know what's going to happen with that, but I always tell people uh, hacking, and basically that's what's happening here, is the community is just uh, hacking around on the OS X or, or Mac OS, I should say, and just to get it to work. And this is fine, um, but long term, I don't know what's going to happen. They're going to probably put roadblocks in the kernel. And what that's going to do is the Hackintosh community, I think, will still survive, albeit a lot lesser. Because right now with an open core system or a really good uh, hardware system where you have uh, all the good hardware, you don't need to really make too many modifications to get a Hackintosh running. You can technically do updates on that Mac and you're fine. Uh, I think that's going to go away completely once the transition to ARM and they completely phase out all of their old product lines of Intel chips and everything's an ARM. And as soon as that happens, that OS, which will probably be two versions, three versions down the line, I think 2022 is when they're going to phase out what they have right now. And uh, that means basically the Hackintosh community will definitely dwindle there won't be any more updating your system and, without actually breaking it. I think people will still mod the kernels and get things going on Mac, but you just won't be able to run updates, which kind of stinks, but it is what it is. And that's just kind of where we're at with Hackintosh. I absolutely love this project. I love working on Hackintoshes um, and something that uh, I'm kind of passionate about. I've been messing around with them all this past week and uh, just having a good time. And it's something that I love tinkering with. Uh, but with that, let me know your thoughts down in the comments. And as always, thank you to all my patrons. Without you, I couldn't make videos like this one. And I'll see you in the next one.